Today we're going to be reviewing the Kessler Crane Pocket Jib and Pocket Dolly. Welcome to Next Wave TV. This episode is made possible by CPM Film Tools, your lightweight solution for caging the beast. LCD Viewfinder, the essential accessory for DSLR video. Lightcraft Workshop, the perfect tools to create the perfect image. Manhattan LCD, the affordable solution for high definition monitoring. GZCam.com, your source for gear reviews, do-it-yourself video, and photography projects. Glinco Lighting, professional lighting for photo and video. Hello and welcome to Next Wave TV. I'm your host, Tony Reale, and today I'm joined with Tony Mata, uh, Director of Photography. I've asked Tony to join us because uh, he has much more experience working with uh, multiple different jibs around the industry. Uh, Tony, why don't you tell us a little bit of some, some of the jibs you've worked with in the past? Oh, well, it depends on what the rental house has. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just you know, basically work with uh, Travato jib, the Porta jib, those Mandy, the EC jib, actually we rented once in um, Florida, um, you name it, pretty much. Okay. And now this, this jib, uh, which you recently used on our behind the scenes of a DSLR commercial shoot for a recent uh, wedding recreation, this is your ca Cambo jib? Yes. This is a Cambo video boom. It's made in Holland by a camera manufacturer. It's a very well known in the still photography industry. They made the Cambo cameras and uh, they started making video they call them booms, you know, but basically what they are is, is a jib. And the thing about this jib that I really like is a modular jib goes up to 25 feet in length with right. the proper extensions, yes. Now the, the Kessler pocket jib is definitely doesn't go that long, um, but it is um, at its smallest, uh, it's a little smaller than we have what you have right here. Um, but main reason we have this jib is because this is your favorite jib. This is what you've been working with for a little while now. And uh, we want to demonstrate and see how well the pocket jib compares to one that uh, you've been using for a while. I've been using the pocket jib for a couple weeks now. I, I do like it and we'll go over some of the features, but I want to see what Tony's opinion is as he's worked with many other models. And now one of the reasons I went with the pocket jib was because its size and portability, everything I need for the pocket jib minus the weights is right in here. Uh, inside this bag is the K-Pod. This is their heavy duty uh, tripod system. This is rated for several hundred pounds. Um, nice and heavy duty. One thing I probably will get eventually um, is uh, the wheels that screw in here, like Tony has over on his jib. Um, porting it around once it's set up is kind of difficult, so having those wheels makes life a little more easy. This is the swivel mount. Um, there's two options for mounting it. I went with the swivel mount. The other option is the Hercules head, which is their really, really heavy duty uh, tripod head. Um, I didn't really need the extra movement that the, the uh, Hercules head gave me. So now this is the, the pocket jib contained in the case. I'm gonna take it out, stick it on here. And now, Attach the screw mount. I'll try this one. So now that is mounted on there. Now we need to mount the bowl adapter. I've got this great little pouch in here, which uh, contains all the little goodies that I'm going to still need. So let's go ahead and mount oh, this on there. That's the one I need. So now the other accessories are actually for the pocket uh, dolly, which we'll get to in a little bit. But now all I need to do is throw the, the head on there okay. and the weights and we're set up. All right, now to, uh, to mount the weights, we take this out, these slide out like this and loosen this up. Those we'll slide together, tighten on, and we are in business. 
so now this is ready to have the weights put on there and put the camera on Now the pocket jib is rated for, uh, I believe it's at its condensed form like this, uh, 40 pounds and then at its fully extended uh, distance, I think it's around 25 pounds. So we're right at that threshold with the O'Connor head here. This is the 1030 HD and uh, my own little next wave rig, which we'll be talking about in the future from CPM Film Tools. But uh, yeah, we're right at the threshold. So we're going to see how well it performs at that threshold. And then we may, uh, if it's suffering, we might condense it down. It's good to um, push the limits, you know, to oh see. Yeah. That's the way to test things. See what the maximum is. All right. Cool. So let's go ahead and throw some weights on there and try it out. Okay. Ready? And there you go. Keep the focus on the chair for now. Now, now rack to the bottle. Beauty. Stay on the bottle. I bumped in it, that's okay. For now, anyway, it's a test. Don't lose the focus, I'll, I'll There you go. Great. I mean, it's not perfect, but for the demonstration mm -hmm. purposes, it's fine. All right, now we're also using your O'Connor head here. I personally use a Manfrotto just because it's a little more affordable. Uh, for my price tag, but we're going to use this O'Connor head again on the pocket jib, so let's go ahead and get it set up. The jib configuration is a little shorter. Yeah, it's different. Here. We're not going to be the same, we're not going to get the same exact shot. Right. But in terms of operating and the feel for it, it's, you know, we can extend good it idea. if we need to, but overall, this is just getting the, the fluidity of it. Exactly. Fluidity, that's the word. <laughs> All right. And we really this in Spanish. There you go. Do it. This got nice, soft rack. Ease onto the bottle. Ease. There you go. Now stay on. Oh, a little snag. <laughs> First time on the job, huh? <laughs> there you go. Stay on the bottle. There you go. Let's float around that bottle for a second. I want to test, I'm testing the, the, the jib field, you know, mm -hmm. let's cut. See, one of the things I like about it to test about jib, that uh, it's the precision of the jib. You know, this one, it's a pretty nice feel to it and it also stays where you leave it. Oh, well, it drifts a little bit, but well, that happens to do with your leveling. Yeah, there. it's not leveled. Yeah, if it's totally. not leveled, that's going to do that. But up and down, you know, it's not drifting at all. So, yeah, you got to ensure that you do, do level the jib at first, but it, it has good precision. I like the fluidity of the head here. It's pretty nice panning. It has a nice feel to it. Is that, that, is that like a bearing there? What, what does it have? Um, it's it's their school. I know that I don't know the details of it. It's their own design, so yeah, it's it's pretty nice. For a camera of this weight, you know, this is more than enough. You need anything. I mean, you start putting a red in there. I don't think you could use this, right? Or a film camera, but for a DSLR loaded like you have it, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. Or a smaller, you know, like a EX1 or a HVX right. loaded. Obviously with the EX1, you wouldn't need all this stuff. No, necessarily. No, but by the time you put, you know, a, a good follow focus and monitors and all that, they get pretty heavy. Right. Um, yeah, I like this. I like the fact that it's very portable and you can travel with it. Mm -hmm. You know, comparing this to the other jib, it's, in that sense, it wouldn't make sense because that one is not made built for travel. It's built for something that's quick to be, to uh, to put together exactly. and also to take a lot of weight for the size of jib. That right. jib takes quite a bit of weight. But uh, in terms of, you know, like, you know, I'm, I'm going to Africa this February, I don't know if you, I told you, but yeah. uh, I, I would love to take something like this on, 
if I could. <laughs> you know, because I wouldn't be taking that. You need a crew for that. You need another oh, yeah. guy. Yeah, this this I can operate by myself. The only tricky thing is I tried pulling focus by myself, and that just doesn't work well because you need to really have one hand navigating the head, telling the jib where to go, the other one doing your pans and your tilts, and they need somebody else pulling focus. Yeah, you, pulling focus for yourself is, you know... So either you should stop down or get a camera with autofocus if, you, if you're going completely by yourself. Now you have an O'Connor hand, which is much nicer than my Monfrotto, but even so, what, I, what was happening was I was trying to tilt, like if I would try to tilt up, the, the jib would rise. So, you know, you... Oh yeah, you're talking two axes here. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we were just talking about the axis up and down right here. Mm -hmm. Vertical axis and horizontal axis, uh, that's all we're, you know, this is another whole beast. This, man, this Manfrotto head is like, super expensive. <laughs> yeah. But it, you know, it shows, it's just a beautiful mm -hmm. fluidity. This jib has got a pretty nice fluidity. I, I think it's, uh, it's a pretty good product. Now, construction and all that, like I, you know, it, it seems to it has good engineering and it has been built for, for travel, you know, which is nice. Mm -hmm. I like that part. And you know, a lot of times when, when you get a jib, when you're testing this, you got to really pay attention to all the different, the, the way that it's been put together, you know, the way it's joined together. I've, I've seen jibs where, you know, after a, a year or so, they're starting to getting all raggedy and loose and that just completely can ruin a shot. Right. So if you have ways to tighten things, you know, to give me good maintenance, like for example, these are all bolts in here. There's no, I don't see any, well, there's a couple. Not really. But you know, these things can be tightened, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is screws. These are all screws. So yeah, there's the, possi the possibility in the future, as this thing, as things loosen up, you can either tighten them or replace them. And that's very important. I've seen jibs that right off the bat, right off the box, you do this kind of thing, and you see all sorts of unwanted movements, you know. Right. All right, so now what we have over here is the pocket dolly system. Here, I'll lock down the swivel. This is one of the reasons I, I went with this system is that it can easily uh, swap between the jib and the, the, the slider very quickly. Hold this, brother. There you go. There's not a lot of room here. There's a smaller one that actually comes with the high hat. Um, so you obviously got your own, but if you need to, we could use a smaller one. Um, now I told, I was told by um, Eric Kessler uh, that the high hat does reduce some of the stability of the um the slider the uh especially if you use it off of the the back but overall i found that in my setup it works pretty good and it allows me to quickly go i don't have to flat mount or anything like that i can quickly go from the the jib to the hi-hat and back and forth on shoots if i need to um well, you okay just i'm giving it i mean if, i'm just basically testing this for field it's a very nice and smooth Look at that, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this later, but definitely a move to be done with two hands here to be precise. I have a longer lens, which I'm making it harder than it should be, but I wanna test, you know, stability. So as long as I keep my two hands even, it's a very stable shot, which you don't get by using the little swivel. I personally, I personally don't like the swivel as much. I mean, this seems to me kind of like a, I don't know, why it's like an, the camera should be an extension of your arms, should be in your hands as much as possible. I know that you can add a motorized mount to that. But for you know, who things. uses motorized anyway, you know? Real men use their hands. <laughs> Look at that, that's super smooth. I mean, that's beautiful. Did you just, I, if I had one of these, I'll get rid of this chain. Uh, this swivel and just keep the dolly as, as it is, reduce the weight. I mean, unless, I don't know, maybe there are other situations when this is used as an incline and you want to use it. Yeah, I could see that, you know, but honestly, this is more precise. And like I said before, let me just roll so you guys can see this later. Nobody's pulling focus. Why don't you pull focus to see if that adds a little extra vibration, ready? and bring it on. 
and lose the focus. There's a little bit of there, but not too much. Uh, their first system was IGUS, and uh, that was uh, basically similar to some of the, the do-it-yourself models, just a lot more um, precise. And then they, their version, this is version two. The version two got to be a lot more um, completely original, original design. I think it's a lot smoother because it's a bearing system. Um, so I'm a big fan of it. I think, yeah, I'm glad oh, I waited for the no question. Year. It is smooth. We all have preferences. I just think the swivel thing is, looks <laughs> like Tinker Toys or something. You know? I mean, well, it's an option. Yeah. The rails are strong. They're, I mean, they're very nice. I like the little hi-hat. Hi and I'm, keep in mind, you guys, I mean, you got, a, you got an O'Connor 1030 HD head in here. I mean, this is like total overkill. I mean, do you agree? Mm -hmm. you, you don't have to have this humongous head for a DSLR. You have a nice Bogan, smaller head that, that's actually balanced to the, to the type of weather you're talking about. I mean, mm -hmm. About here, not only will it feel better, it'll, it'll lower the angle of the camera. Your lens end up about here. It, it'll be even more stable. Yeah, I've used my Manfrotto 504, and it's worked really well. Yeah. The only reason we're using the O'Connor is to keep everything consistent. Oh, yeah, because so that that's just, what we started with. Yeah, that's. But to me, it looks like Beetlejuice here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let's just—it's a very, very smooth. I'm not gonna say I'm deny that. It's very smooth. Go ahead and tell us what you're doing then. I'm just basically getting the feel for this. As I, I would operate it, uh, if I were to have a Sakudo type finder over here, where I can actually you use your head to stabilize the whole rig even more. And so that I, I can, uh, not only aids in the stabilization of the camera, see this way? Assuming, like I said again, let's assume you have a Sakuto finder. Then your eye and your whole body becomes part of the, of the motion. And then you util utilize the, the pocket jib as you would a dolly as a, or a slider, of course. It's what it is, a slider. To me, that's the optimum way to operate this, and it's beautiful. It's a very, very smooth slider. It's um, a pretty nice toy. You like it? Oh, yeah. Like I said, can I take it to my trip? Maybe. You're really, <laughs> really good. <laughs> so overall, let's, uh, let's just talk about the price tag of here. We got the hi-hat. Everything that you've seen with the cases and everything was around $2,800. Um, things that I would probably get in the future would be the wheels, like I talked about. There's a whole dolly kit upgrade that actually adds dolly tracks um, and wheels and everything like that. Chew the K-Pod itself along with a seat. I'll probably look at that in the future. Um, although I know like Tony uses just a doorway dolly, so that could be an option to look into. Um, but I'll probably get the, the wheels for mobility. And then on the uh, pocket dolly, I've been using it separate um, with just a, uh, like a couple, either a a tripod and a light stand on one end, or I actually used two light stands and was able to get pretty good uh, operation off of that. Um, but the other option is to get outrigger feet that attach for um, different levels if you're trying to get beyond a tabletop or multiple surfaces or stuff like that. So those are probably the next things that I'm going to give Kessler Crane my money for. Um, but overall, I've, I've been happy with it. Um, it's met the expectations that I had, which is I needed something very portable, small, relatively small, uh, with adjustability. We didn't talk about it, but the crane does extend out. Uh, this is the three foot extension. It does extend out to up to under, uh, just under five feet, I think. So I have um, that additional ability to go without being limited just to the size, and I don't have to bring any additional hardware. And I like your jib. You have to bring extra extra pieces if you want to extend it out. Yeah, up to 25. Right. Um, so that's my stuff. What do you think, Tony? I think it's a pretty good toy, like I said. In <laughs> fact, I mean, it's just one of those things where, you know, it's, it's, it's comparing apples to apples. Well, this is not apples to apples. This right. basically I could actually have used for both. Right. You know, and then I have this for what a crane is, is meant to be. But this is a great, a great travel jib. Again, it has its limitations in weight. I wouldn't put a red on it, but if we're shooting on DSLRs or you know the smaller cameras that are coming today, I, I think it's fantastic. It's really good. Great. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Um, be sure to subscribe on YouTube, uh, become a fan of our Facebook page, and you can follow myself on Twitter, twitter.com slash Tony And I'd be sure to stay tuned for additional reviews and uh, gear tutorials.